Hi, Dr. Dave Webster. In my ongoing video blog series, The Travesty of Ontario Patient Access to Pet CT in our so-called liberal evidence-based patients first healthcare system, what I said I would address uh, this on this next video is why have Canadian and international pet experts condemned the Ontario government and their medical experts for, quotes, unethical and bordering on immoral, end of quotes, acts against our uh, our, our Ontario cancer patients. Um, and I hope that this is really one of my most effective uh, videos uh, uh, at getting this message across uh, as to just what uh, my colleagues and I have been up against trying to get uh, patients access to the world standard of imaging management. Um, a supplementary question, um, and just what does the Liberal government have against women with breast cancer? So this is part one of the PET PREDICT trial. So is the PET PREDICT trial an example of just what is best for women with breast cancer in Ontario or an example of the contempt the Liberals have for women with breast cancer in Ontario? So that's the questions we'll be contemplating with this part one. So the PET PREDICT trial was the Ontario liver Liberal government experiment on women with early stage breast cancer. Now it was this experiment that was the tipping point for Canadian physicians and led to the 2005 motions from the Canadian Association of Nuclear Medicine Physicians or the CANM. The motions themselves was first of all quotes the trials were unethical, end of quotes. Secondly, they demanded that these trials be stopped immediately. And finally, that a panel of Canadian experts in ethics and health policy be assembled to determine how this possibly could have happened in Ontario. Now, it turns out that these unprecedented and disturbing motions were simply dismissed and ignored by the then uh, Minister of Health for the Liberal Government under Mr. McGuinty, or sorry, Dalton McGuinty, uh, Mr. George Smitherman, and also by the Cancer Care Ontario quotes experts along with their colleagues at McMaster University Evidence-Based School of Medicine. So the PET PREDICT trial. This truly is the most vivid example of what the Liberals and their so-called medical experts were prepared to do to patients to fulfill their mandate with respect to access of patients with cancer and other serious illnesses to the accepted world standard of imaging management, that is PET scanning. So their mandate, well as I've said repeatedly, was to discredit PET, to block PET wherever possible, and where that was not possible, to delay access to pet for patients as long as possible. But how do we know that this was their mandate? Well, I've, if you've seen my previous videos, you'll know uh, Mr. Michael McCarthy. He was uh, an advisor to the Minister of Health of Ontario, Mr. Smithman, and he was present at the meetings where basically CCO was given its marching orders. Uh, Mr. McCarthy was then uh, subsequently hired as a lobbyist by the Ontario Association of Nuclear Medicine when I was the president, so we knew what went on in those meetings. Now. Why, why, did, why was this decision made uh, by the government uh, and why was Cancer Care Ontario directed to do this to our patients? Well, if you haven't already guessed, you'll figure it out eventually, I'm sure, shortly. Um, anyway, this is a keynote speaker, Dr. Leslie Devine, Levine, um, and you'll note that he's the chief scientific officer of something called Mars Excite in uh, Toronto, Canada. If you've ever seen the building downtown, it's spectacular, right in the middle of downtown Toronto. Um, basically, I believe that this was an, a promotion uh, for Dr. Levine for his work when he was, in fact, senior medical advisor to Mr. George Smitherman, the Minister of Health for, for the Liberals and what his role was in the, the assessing of PET. Now, I met with Dr. Les Levine uh, when I was uh, president of the OANM. This was back in 2004, and I was there to discuss uh, the, our, the OANM, OANM's executives' concerns about how PET was being evaluated for introduction for Ontario patients. And amongst other things discussed in the meeting, interestingly, Dr. Levine ridiculed the use of health technology assessment, the HTA, to evaluate PET, and this HTA is a form of so-called evidence-based medicine. Now there are forms of evidence-based medicine that are, can be very useful, but as we made very clear, there is no evidence to evaluate PET, CT, or any other imaging device yet in existence. So, interestingly and not surprisingly, the HTA is exactly 
what would be used to evaluate Pat in Ontario, and with Dr. Levine's blessings. I repeatedly wrote him asking him to explain the contradictions and so on here. He has refused to answer these questions. Now, just as I was leaving the meeting with Dr. Levine, however, he said to me, David, it is not about the money. We're just trying to do what is best for Ontario's cancer patients. Can you imagine that? Anyway, the pet predict trial. The CCO Cancer Care Ontario would focus their most intense efforts on blocking one group of cancer patients from access to pet, and that group is women in Ontario with breast cancer. Um, now, Dr. Bill Evans was the first chair of something called the Pet Steering Committee, um, and this was the critical Cancer Care Ontario Committee that it was involved in designing experiments on cancer patients. The Pet Predict trial in particular was sponsored by another committee called Ontario Clinical Oncology Group, or OCOG, and Dr. Mark Levine uh, was the director, and I think remains the director. Now, the public claims of Cancer Care Ontario in these various committees is that they, uh, there was excellent cooperation with Ontario physicians. Uh, they were open and transparent in working with the medical community. Uh, there were pronouncements about this in the news media and, and medical publications. Some may remember, if you've seen my previous videos, this, this key paper that you'll want your lawyers to have access if you ever sue these people, uh, called Evidence-Based Approach to Introduction of Positron Emission Tomography in Ontario. Dr. Evans is first author, Dr. Lapalkis, and various people. But out of the results section, I want you to pay attention to this line here. First, oncologists and nuclear medicine physicians who in Canada have r rarely co collaborated on research have worked together to design and execute clinical trials. Now, the reality, as you might guess, there has never been such a lack of cooperation and outrage from Canadian nuclear medicine physicians against another uh, group of physicians uh, that I've ever been aware of in the history of medicine, public medicine in particular, in Canada. The trials were written in secret by uh, physicians uh, that, to the best of our knowledge, were not qualified to be PET-CT experts. We've asked them about that. They refused to answer the questions. Um, repeatedly, uh, attempts were made by the nuclear medicine community to have uh, their own PET experts, including me, uh, help help design the experiments, but these in fact were ignored. Now, uh, now this is about breast cancer, so let's get a bit of background uh, about how we investigate uh, women with breast cancer. Um, the critical question for these women is whether or not the cancer has spread to lymph nodes in the axilla and elsewhere uh, which drain the breast. Now here is uh, the right side of the patient, the breast here clearly, and these are little vessels uh, that drain the fluid between the tissue or the tissue, uh, there, there's fluid in our tissue and it gets drained through these and picked up and through these filters called lymph nodes. Now they're not just simple filters. Lymph nodes are the very first uh, site of defense or line of defense against things like, for example, bacterial infections. And your tonsils are an ex excellent example of this. But in the case of cancer, they're also the first uh, attempt that the body can make to try and block the spread of cancer to these lymph nodes. Now, so let's consider a cancer here in the breast uh, that has moved to these nodes. Now, the good news, in a way, is that these are surgically accessible. Uh, this is the uh, muscle here in your chest wall, uh, behind, and, and the lymph nodes are up in here. It's, it's a relatively simple uh, operation, um, and we can biopsy these lymph nodes. Now, these lymph nodes are called sentinel lymph nodes, and that is because if these nodes are negative, then the patient has a very good, <coughs> sorry, excellent prognosis. On the other hand, if there's even microscopic spread of cancer to these lymph nodes, it, trained, it changes things dramatically, as we will see. So and here's a, an, uh, a biopsy sample, and the arrow here points to a small nest of uh, microscopic lymph node metastasis, or breast cancer spreading to an axillary lymph node. Now, even a metastasis this small, as I've said, dramatically changes breast can cancer management and has a worse prognosis or outlook for these patients and will be treated more aggressively. Now, it is simply not possible in this current day and age to image uh, these small but critical lesions, and I don't care what you're using for imaging, whether it's CT, PET-CT, MR, whatever. Um, now, one more question uh, or point in our uh, background is, but what if the breast cancer does not drain to the lymph nodes in the axilla? Now, a little note of caution, PET, like anything else, must be used in the right indication. It 
like any test, has its limitations. And if this metastasis is too small, as the example I showed you, to detect, then PET-CT will not see these ex the, this metastasis. And therefore, it's important to remember that a negative PET-CT scan does not exclude the possibility of metastasis. That can only ultimately be determined by uh, microscopic analysis of tissue. Now, back to our diagram here, um, and these are what are now, we've talked about the axillary lymph nodes, these are the retrosternal lymph nodes, or the lymph nodes behind your sternum. So, here's a cancer again in the breast, and what if it moves to the retrosternal nodes? Well, you, you know, the only way that you can biopsy these is by actually splitting the chest. So this is uh, chest spreaders here, this is the heart behind. That's literally what you have to do to sample these lymph nodes, so not an easy prospect, right? So, um, I don't know if people see my previous video on that 16-year-old with lymphoma in Ontario, but this is, and I'm going to call it a transaxial or transverse slices, slice with the chest. You can see the sternum and left lung here, uh, the dye in, in the, um, the vessels in the chest, the aorta, and the pulmonary artery. Now, some may, you, you'll, if you saw that, or saw that video, and, or if you haven't, this is a small lymph node in the retrosternal or behind the sternum, um, and this was not identified on that 16-year-old uh, lymphoma patient's CT scan. But the point is that even if it was identified as being slightly enlarged on the CT, the CT has zero ability to determine whether it's cancer. And if we look at the PET CT on the other hand, it's pretty clear here that this is excess glucose uptake and this virtually certainly is a cancer spread to this uh, lymph node. In this case, it was a lymphoma patient, but if this was a breast cancer patient, then we'll see an example of how important that is. Now, um, so this is the end of part one, uh, why such unprecedented condemnation of the Ontario Liberal government and their medical experts, and the supplementary question, just what does the Liberal government have against women with breast cancer in Ontario? Again, is this an example of what is best for women with breast cancer in Ontario, as so eloquently stated by Dr. Les Levine when I met him in 2004, or an example of the kind of contempt that the Liberal government and their experts have for women with breast cancer in Ontario. So the next video will be part two, where we'll actually talk about the PET PREDICT trials and, and why they were determined to be clearly unethical. And then finally, number three will be a, a case example in the implications for women with breast cancer in Ontario. So thanks, and um, hopefully we can make a change. We need to. Thank you.